Well, what's up, family? Welcome back to another legendary reaction video. Over here, family, we like to take a deep dive into the lyricism, understand the viable message, and see where the value lies so we can apply it to our lives to continue to be great individuals. But before we get into the song, man, I always like to explain the background theme, meaning of the song. Um, so we got Dire Scratch, Money for Nothing is a song that captures the, I can't say this word, uh, it captures basically the 1980s offering of a sat satirical take on the era's music industry and the rise of music videos, basically. And the song's lyrics, penned by Mark Knopfler, the band's lead vocalist and guitarist, reflect a sense of irony and social commentary. The repeated line, I want my MTV, serves as a nod to the network's famous advertising slogan and underscores the song's central theme of music, television's influence on culture, and the per perception of musicians. The lyrics portray a working-class perspective with the narrator expressing envy and disbelief at the seemingly effortless success of rock stars who appear on MTV. The phrase, quote-unquote, money for nothing and chicks for free, suggests a cynical view of the music industry where image and style are perceived to be as important, if not more so, than musical talent and hard work. The song's narrator, who works in appliance delivery, contrasts his own labor-intensive job with the glamorous life of rock stars, highlighting a disconnect between the value of physical labor and the rewards of entertainment. It's important to note that the song contains language that is considered derogatory and offensive, particularly the use of the word, I'm not going to say, while it was less controversial at the time of the songs released in 1985. Modern audience may find it problematic. The intent behind its use in the song is to mimic the ignorant perspective of the character speaking rather than to promote such language. Money for Nothing is a reflection of its time, capturing the attitudes and cultural shifts of the 1980s, and remains a classic rock staple known for its distinctive guitar riff and its critical yet humorous examination of the music industry. So with no further ado, family, I have the lyrics pulled up on my phone, and we can take a dive straight into this amazing song. So let's go. I feel like him having that outcry right there is like the famous intro is basically establishing like the public has been more obsessed with the music industry, allowing rock stars to make a lot of money like faster, you know, with the word, with the word resembling like a spoiled child cry, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like a slogan that begun in 1982, basically establishing the theme of the song using what at a, at the time was unambiguous slogan basically it was like i don't know it's like in context it's like the public it's like the context is going to be established obviously the rest of the song but i just feel like they want their hard they want their hard work to be recognized like at the end of the day what is it for someone to gain publicity for free with less work when someone who actually genuinely work and put their hard, but hard blood, sweat, and tears into it? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's why the whole outcry, the famous outcry at the intro um, was incorporated.
rocking out with the drum solo. I'm guessing headbands was like famous back then, like a big thing, because I don't really see people rocking headbands like that now. I love a headband, bro. My man throwing that shade, money for nothing and the chicks for free. Hey, tell him. And I feel like this continues the idea that the narrator may be looking like a little bit envious, you know what I'm saying? Because he refers to the guy on MTV um, who he admits aren't actually dumb because they have figured out that they can get money and fame for doing something that he believes is very easy. You know what I'm saying? like him saying that like in verse two with Mark Knopfler he's like yeah like you wearing earrings and makeup you know yeah buddy that's his own hair you know he got his own jet plane he a millionaire we got a star microwave ovens kitchen deliveries and Moody's refrigerators and color TV he like look you ain't doing no work I'm doing some real work you making it look like you working but you ain't really working you don't know nothing about no hard work I feel like <laughs> That's crazy. He said, who's up there? The Hawaiian noises. He banging on the bongos like a chimpanzee. In the 1980s, a growing influence of an international music or world beat will make its way into rock and pop. The songs of error and the dire straits has been known to incorporate many different styles themselves, which would partly involve bongos played by drummer Pick, Wither Pick Withers. Additionally, hair metal drummers, especially in music videos, have a tendency to over- and situate their performances in the spirit of their glam rock roots. Hence, the connection to acting like a chimpanzee, but given the bigoted, bigoted viewpoints of the narrator expressed earlier in the song, the formal point is more likely what was intended. And he said, get your money for done, get your chicks for free. Basically, he like, the narrator remarks that playing rock and music becoming famous to LX like MTV isn't a real job. In the working sense of the word, yet eff it effortlessly grants people financial success and women. Mm. So 
Look, you get your chicks for free. I get my chicks off of hard work. You know what I'm saying? They digging this. You feel me? It's like a rock and roll beat, but this joint keep your head bobbing. Get them their MTV. You know what I'm saying? But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I feel like the viable message that lies within this song is basically like, look. Even though everybody road is different, people may reach their success faster than you think and you actually putting in the hard work. But those who get in success faster and rapidly, as fast as the fire lights up, fast as it burns out. From a longevity, sustainability standpoint, those who work hard, you may be moving refrigerators, TVs, and color, color TVs, and refrigerators and appliances and stuff like that, and installing microwave ovens. But in reality is, the one who generally works hard from a longevity standpoint wins at the end. Those who reach success, nowadays they call it going viral, right? Sometimes you reach success too fast, you don't know how to sustain it, right? So never focus on those who reach successfully and call it work. When you know you're doing the hard work, that's all that matters. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope I poured some value into you guys' lives. Let the love supersede the hate. Spread that peace, love, and positivity. Peace, family.